Good job, little buddy. As you can see it's a very bright day here in Lehigh, Utah. We got this for $75 and we're gonna paint it in our favorite milk paint combo. We get asked a lot about the furniture pieces in our house. We're gonna show you how we make that color. There's a lot of things you could use to clean furniture. We like to use the Dawn. The power wash is great. You get it wet, it activates stuff. We've got it outside because this is actually pretty gross and we didn't wanna clean it inside. Once we get it clean, we're gonna move it inside and clean it there. So you can see really good here. I've scrubbed this side. Looks like I need a couple more scrubs here. Have not scrubbed this side yet. That's how much oil is on this piece. All right, we had a lot of peeling veneer over here. So I'm gonna try to coax the rest of it off with the heat gun because it ran way up where the glue was dried out. And sometimes this works well, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you end up sanding all day. So we'll see how it goes. Some glue is more stubborn than others. We have a couple pieces in our house, um, our buffet that's in our kitchen, and then we have a big hutch that's in our family room, and we get asked all the time what the color is. And the truth is, it's not one color or another, it's two colors. So I like to mix equal parts pantry door and Sweetie Jane and create a blue-green situation. It's just a really pretty color and we love it. You can purchase these paint and products along with the brushes at jamierayvintage.com. I only like to mix up a little bit at a time so that way if I don't need it, I haven't wasted it because it only keeps for a little bit. I'm just gonna mix this up with a whisk and then let it sit for about 10 minutes to thicken up and we'll be ready to add the extra bond. You can also use an immersion blender so it's creamy smooth. We just couldn't find ours so this works. Just gonna add a splash of extra bond. Normally you do two parts paint to one part bond but I wanted to chip. She used lemon oil on this. We scrubbed it but I can still feel like it's on here so I know that I'm gonna need some bond to keep it from all chipping off. The first coat is always a little bit scary looking because it's streaky but it'll get more solid with the second coat. I'm using the Klingon F30. It lays it on here pretty smooth. It's really great for pretty flat surfaces. The nice thing about milk paint is that even if you get some brush strokes, once you sand it, they pretty much smooth out. It is all natural, so it's totally safe to use inside your house. It's actually even USDA bio certified and food safe. So we leave the drawers and the doors in because it just makes it a lot easier to paint and it keeps the paint off the edges. When we're all done, we always sand it smooth and they slide no problem. On old pieces like this, I do not suggest painting the sides of the drawers because chances are it's gonna make that drawer stick when you try to pull it in and out. So it's better to just paint the front, in my opinion. Okay, this is the point where it's looking a little streaky. First coat's going on there. And you're thinking, what have I done to my mother's family heirloom? Well, you painted it and we painted this one and I don't think we destroyed it at all. And by the time we get the second coat on there, it's gonna be amazing. All right, got my paint on here. Now I'm gonna smooth all the strokes out. It will still look a little streaky, but this milk paint as it dries sits pretty flat unless you're really starting to build up a lot of coat. We have just enough to finish this first coat and the second coat won't need bond in it. So you can see what one coat of paint looks like versus the second coat. The second coat has just been brushed on and it's still even not streaky. There's a little bit of touch up that we're gonna need to do, but we like to do the distress, see what chips off, and then we can come back because we're getting pretty good coverage on the second coat. So we'll do touch up if it's needed at the end. So normally I don't paint the back, but this is gonna live in the shop and I have like zero clue where. So I've decided to paint the back so that way if a little bit of it is showing, it's a little bit neater. If I was just doing this for my house, no way I would paint the back. All right, here's the glorious chippiness. Oh. That's gonna be really chippy. We went with a splash of bond. If you don't want it to get this chippy, go with full recommended bond. Because you might not be able to handle the chippiness that we got here. And that's okay. Like not everybody is strong enough to handle the awesomeness.
Okay, so I way loaded up my brush because I'm probably gonna do the entire top of the buffet with this much wax. We're using DIY's white wax to help soften up some of the wood tones. The contrast is a little bit harsh, so this kind of softens it, makes it look a little bit better, and the wax is super creamy and easy to put on. All right, so we're gonna wipe back the excess. We don't have weird streaks in the white wax and then we'll let it sit overnight and tomorrow we will buff it. You can buff it as much as you want and get it to pretty high sheen or you can leave it real matte. That's the beauty of the wax. If you want, you can even clear wax over the top. If you get some wax where you don't want it when you're doing color waxes and that helps pull that back a little bit and control it a little more for you. So I'm going to come through with DIY pennies from heaven and just kind of add a little bit of patina on them. We realize that super chippy isn't for everybody, but a piece like this really makes a statement and the chippy, it gives it a cozy cottage look you just can't get any other way. I love the milk paint because it's not predictable and you never get the same look twice. I mean, we get similar finishes with it, but it's always different. It always chips different. It's awesome. I also love that the patina took two non-matching knob sets and brought them all together. To get these paint products, you can pick them up at jamierayvintage.com. Comment below if you're a chippy lover or not, let us know. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. I've tried several methods for removing veneer. Sanding is probably the least effective and the hardest. The heat gun does work. It always seems like it takes way longer than I wanted to. There's not really an easy way to get veneer off your piece if it's still stuck down pretty good. I've tried soaking it. I've tried steaming it. I've tried using an iron with like a damp cloth underneath it. I've never had great luck with it. It's just hard work. So if anyone says, oh, this is the easy way to get veneer off, don't listen to them. Expect that you're gonna have to put some elbow grease into this project if you want the veneer off. We could have just sanded the little peeling edges so that they weren't sharp and hopefully stopped some of that peeling, but it does look a lot better now that we have it all off.